Have you ever had anything embarrassing happen to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Probably know the feeling, right? You get flush in the face, palms get sweaty. Chances are you probably don't want to tell anybody about your embarrassing secret. What if I told you that's the exact opposite of what you should do with your most embarrassing stories? <laughs> I tell you this because I had something incredibly embarrassing happen to me when I studied abroad in Australia between my junior and senior year of college. After a night of drinking, we were scheduled to play rugby at a local stadium, and I was excited for this because I'm a fan of American football, and rugby's kind of like football, but without the pads. So we board the bus to go to the stadium, and I noticed that right when I got on the bus that my stomach's upset and I have to go to the bathroom. Now, we're about a 45-minute drive from the stadium, and the bus isn't making any stops. You know the feeling when you have to throw up? You feel the fluid in your jaw. You feel sick. You look sick. And you just want people to leave you alone, but they want to comfort you. That's exactly how I felt this entire bus ride. Mm. Hey, Mark, are you doing OK? You don't look so well. Yeah, I'm fine. Just you know, leave me alone. I'm doing fine. I didn't say that, but that's what I was thinking the entire time. So I managed to make it to the stadium. I get off the bus, I see a McDonald's from across the parking lot, and I excuse myself from the group, and I run as fast as I can to the McDonald's. I open the door of the McDonald's, I see the bathroom, and I crap my pants. And as the shame started to rush into my body, I managed to waddle my way over to the bathroom to start to clean up. So it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to clean up, and the whole time I'm in my head thinking, oh, someone's going to come in here and find out. I'm taking too long. Um, now that happens. I open the door to the stall with my underwear to throw it away to destroy the evidence. And I find out that this is the only bathroom in the Western world without a garbage can in it. <laughs> so. I turn back around and I place the underwear behind the toilet <laughs> for a very unlucky Australian McDonald's worker to find later, <laughs> who I assumed I was left there by a very overweight two-year-old, not a 21-year-old grown man. So that's the end of the story in Australia. I leave the country, I don't tell anybody about it. It's not until two years later, I'm going to call with my friends. And my friend Kevin starts telling the story. And Kevin is a redhead, skinny, covered in tattoos. He's also the most open and outgoing person that I know. And Kevin starts telling the story very similar to mine about how he had an accident on a train in, Mo in Montreal. And I noticed that when he's telling the story, he's not embarrassed at all. People are just laughing at the story, they just think it's a good story. So that's when I decided to share my story, my blunder down on it. And I get the same reaction from my friends. They just think it's a good story, and they're laughing about it. And this is something that I was so ashamed about that for years I didn't tell how I was human soul. But something that day in the car with my friends clicked. If I'm open and I'm honest and I'm vulnerable, that's what will make the deepest connection for people. I tell you this because for years to come, I have friends text me, hey, Mark, I just had an accident. I can't wait to tell you about it next time I see you. <laughs> I had a friend admit to me that on his wedding day, he had an accident in his tuxedo. And I congratulated him for that. <laughs> people think that in order to get people to like you and make meaningful connections, you want to puff out your chest your best foot forward and brag about your accomplishments. I remember when I got back from Australia, I couldn't wait to tell people about cool animals that I saw, girls I met, places I went. No one really cared. You might say, well, Mark, your friends just sound like assholes. But, <laughs> and that's partly true. But um, I found that if I'm willing to admit my failures and embarrassments, People are dying to share their failures and their embarrassments with me 
because that's what makes us human when we look up at things in one way or another.